In speaking with other SOLIDWORKS users, and even experienced SOLIDWORKS users, I've found the SOLIDWORKS weldment and routing tool to be very underutilized. What I'd like to discuss in this tip is how to make use of the SOLIDWORKS supplied weldment and routing profiles. To begin, I'm going to start by activating my weldment toolbar by right-clicking over top of any one of the menu icons and I'll have to scroll off the screen to select my weldments toolbar. I'm then going to simply drag and drop my weldments toolbar to the left hand side. Now what I'd like to start by pointing out is by selecting a structural member we all know that we have a list of structural members. By default the SOLIDWORKS installation only includes a few select structural member types with just a few select options for those structural members. However, you may have noticed that with the release of SOLIDWORKS 2007, SOLIDWORKS was giving us access to all of the profiles that were pre-designed for the toolbox library. So that being said, this tip can also be applied to SOLIDWORKS 2007, even though I am demonstrating it in SOLIDWORKS 2008. What we need to do to apply the SOLIDWORKS weldment profiles from the toolbox is simply select the design library and then select the SOLIDWORKS content folder. Within this SOLIDWORKS content folder we'll find a folder labeled weldments. You'll also see that there's a folder labeled routing and blocks. So you can use these similar steps to unleash the routing profiles as well as blocks. In my case I'd like to unleash some of the weldment profiles so I'll select weldments. Once I've selected weldments, you'll see that the weldments are divided into the same groups that they're divided into within the toolbox. I'm going to select the ANSI inch profile, and by holding control and selecting the ANSI inch profile, I'm asked to browse for a location to extract these profiles. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm simply going to extract the profiles to my desktop. I'll select OK and the extraction process begins. We can see that SOLIDWORKS is extracting a large number of profiles. Once the extraction process has completed, I'm going to go to my desktop. In your case, you'll be going to the location where you extracted these files. Open the folder where you extracted the files and you'll find that SOLIDWORKS created a zip file of the files that were extracted. The next step is to extract all of the files and in my case I'm going to extract the files to this current location. Once Windows is completing extracting the files we can finish the extraction process. By opening the folder where Windows extracted the files we'll see that we now have a series of weldment profiles, each folder containing a large number of weldment profiles. The next step is to return to SOLIDWORKS and point the SOLIDWORKS installation to our new location with the weldment profiles in it. Once SOLIDWORKS is reopened, I'm going to select the Options icon and select Options. Next. I'll select file locations and from the list of file locations I'll select the weldment profiles file locations. Next I'll select add to add a new file location and I'll browse to the folder where I've added my new weldment profiles. I'll select the folder for my new weldment profiles and select OK. I can conclude this step by selecting OK again. SOLIDWORKS is going to ask you if you'd like to add this new folder to the search paths. I would suggest selecting yes. Now you can see when we select the structural members icon and select ANSI inch, under type we have a full list of types. Under each type we have a full list of possible sizes. I trust that this tip will save you hours of time. If you found this tip helpful, please pass the word on that Inspiratech is producing extremely helpful tips for the SOLIDWORKS user. 
For more information, you can visit www.inspertech.com. Thank you for listening.